So this is more or less the same code that we saw earlier except I have added a few print statements. In addition to these print statements I have added a comment that starts with to do which is a common way in which programmers set little reminders for themselves. I have set a comment here saying don't forget to remove this. In general we try to avoid putting print statements inside our functions unless the whole purpose of our function is to print something. Usually as I'm sure you have recognized we write functions to return an answer and then that answer can be printed in whichever way the person calling our function uh, desires to print it. They may not even directly print the answer, they may use our answer for further calculations and then finally print something else. In general it's a bad idea to include print statements in your function unless your function is really supposed to print something and that is why I have put these comments reminding me to remove these print statements later. These print statements are going to be useful for us because we are going to print the ID of this result object, this list object and I want you to observe something very interesting about what gets printed when we use the append method as we are going to do first and then when we change this to the suggestion our friend made. So let's visualize this code. So when we get started we will define our helper function is prime and then the primes function itself and down here we are calling this with the, the same list as we saw earlier. Again we are expecting the answer 26 to be printed eventually but before the answer is printed a few more things will get printed because we have these print id of result statements. So let's call our function here is our data list. Uh, we initialize our result to be the empty list. So that is visualized like this. It says empty list. Of course we denote it with these square brackets but the visualization shows it this way. Now I'm going to first print the ID of this uh, result object. So the first thing that will get printed is some large number. Notice that it ends with 443. Now we examine each i in data. In this case i is 1. We know it's not a prime so we know we're not going to come into this if condition. So I'm just going to skip very quickly to the point where this code realizes the answer is false and then we move on to the next value of i which is 2. Now 2 actually is a prime. We're going to call the isPrime function and recognize that. Finally we return true and since it's a prime we're going to uh, come to line 14. And now we're going to take i and append it to this empty list. So notice that this list is no longer going to be empty, it's now going to have the value 2 in it. So it's a non-empty list and at index 0 it has the value 2. So we have actually created a non-empty list. Now I'm going to print the id of this result object. Notice that the original object had id ending with 4432. We have just called the append method on this object. It's no longer the empty list. So what gets printed when we click on next? We get exactly the same object. So this is important to understand. The append method does not change the object. You can see in the visualization that a new value was appended but the object itself, the list object itself does not change. Now this might seem a bit confusing. We will understand this idea more clearly when we demystify uh, how lists work and in particular we demystify how list.append works. To demystify this we cannot remain inside Python. We will actually try and recreate list.append in the C programming language and you will better understand what is going on here. For now however I just want you to get comfortable with this visualization. All we have done is taken the value 2 and appended it to the empty list. 
So now we have this non-empty list that contains 2 in it. Now we examine the next value of i and the next value of i is 13. Once again, we know that this is a prime. So eventually this is prime function is going to return true. And when it does, we are going to take 13 and append it to this list. Once again, what is that going to look like? Well, this list is going to grow to now have 13. And again, when we print the ID of this result, again, it's not going to change. It's the same list object, it's just somehow growing. We now examine the next value of i, which is 21. This is not a prime, so finally we will not add this item to our list. We will try and look at the next item i in our list. We will realize that there are no more i's in the original given list, and so we will return the result, which is just 2 and 13. So when we finally return this, this is what gets printed as our final list.